Amen. We are in a great feast of the great king. He's been feeding us with life. And the feast is still on. In the precious name of Jesus, this feast will deliver maximally in your life. Yeah. But the meek will lead guide in judgment, and the meek will lead teaching the way that he shall choose. Where meekness stops, that's where insight stops. It takes meekness to assess light. The meek will he guide in judgment, Psalm 25 and verse 9. The meek will he teach his way. The meek. There are people you want to sit down to counsel with and they already know everything. They know everything. Oh, yeah, I did that. Oh, yeah, I did that. Uh, and I will say humorously, I think your case is beyond me. Your case is beyond me. Maybe what I have is only the stethoscope. I don't have the X-ray machine. I don't have the MRI. I don't have the scan. Your case has passed my level. So move on to where they have uh, MRI, where they have scan to help, to help you out. Because all that I know, you already know. So how can I help you? It takes meekness. I come into church and I ask the Lord, I must have my takeaway from this service. Even when I'm the one teaching. I must have my takeaway from this service. What are you teaching me? What are you showing me? By the grace of God, tomorrow evening, we'll be releasing two volumes of materials published called From My Archives. Amen. They are my takeaways from his presence. It happens daily. My takeaway from his presence. It happens daily. When you see that as already known, you won't know anything more. You already know. They mentioned something, oh yeah, that topic. I mean, I, I, I dealt with that two years ago. Absolutely. When it comes to tithing, I'm an expert. I mean, everybody knows. Even Papa knows. That tithing and me. Say something else. Come to so many hours, may I know so many. I, I'm now 30 years old in terms of experience. When you come as one that does not know, then it teaches you. In the precious name of may the things we have learned today add value to each one of us. Yeah. It's the light, it's not the person, the light. How do I call it? It's the light, it's not the person, it's the light. You never walk in darkness anymore. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus. Yeah. Shiloh is a feast of the world. It's a feast of the world. We are gathered to be taught the way forward. We are gathered to learn the way out of unwanted situations. We are gathered to be taught the way to come and break through at impossible times. We are to become far dominion upon by reason of authority and light that we get from God. In the precious name of Jesus, this Shiloh will make the greatest difference in everyone's life, yeah. including your life, yeah. including your life. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus, yeah. thank you, Jesus, for what one, what two, and what three we have been fed. And thank you for it. Now we're here again to be fed again. Thank you for being there for us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. Among the oncoming holocaust of the end time is what the Bible calls pestilences. Pest, that's gone beyond material stuff. Pestilences. I mean, incurable diseases. Plagues. Pestilences. Matthew 24 and from verse 8. 
move forward now. Nay. Can we go on to verse 4, please? Let's start from verse 4. Jesus answered and said, Take it that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall arise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, hunger, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Finance can handle pestilences. Otherwise, you saw people dying like wood in developed countries under the COVID-19 saga. Wars and rumors of wars, money can't handle that. Yet God has a plan of exemption for his people. I'll be speaking to this subject, which is, it looks so simple, but the most powerful spiritual force in the world of the spirit. Three forces are rule the world. Faith, hope, which is vision, and love. But the greatest of them all is love. I'd like us to sit up properly for the few minutes we have and lay hold on this. It's not knowing this that matters, but this becoming an experience of one's life is what makes it profitable. My prayer that this will not be a theory anymore in anyone's life, yeah. but an experience to celebrate for life. Somebody believes that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Unveiling the supernatural power of love. Anchor scripture here is 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.9. I have not seen, no, here I heard, neither has entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Genuine love for God makes a believer a living wonder. Eyes have not seen. It turns believers to pathfinders, pace setters, and trailblazers. Genuine love for God. It gives the believer access to the deep things of God that makes high flyers on the earth. Eagles don't know of fire or heat on the earth. It turns eagles out of believers. So the gruesome issues on the earth, they don't have a feel of it. They ride the storm smiling, the eagles. You can't set traps for eagles They're in the sky. <laughs> you can't waylay them. They are off the human sphere. You can't threaten eagles with fire. No. Fire does not burn in the sky. It burns on the earth. It makes a believer an impossible case for the devil. And I'll tell you why. The love of God secures divine presence for the believers. What makes love the greatest spiritual virtue? Divine presence. Divine presence. Divine presence. Money can buy. Divine pre position can buy. Divine presence. True lovers of God are indestructible. Forget about it. True love. Because... <laughs> He dwells in God and God in him. 
You destroy God first. First John chapter 4 and verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has towards us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. What makes love the greatest spiritual virtue? Divine presence. Unbeatable presence of God. Divine presence. You put up a fight of faith. Love doesn't fight. Battles clear the way when love is coming. Battles clear the way is <laughs> tremble down at, at the presence of God. The sea gave way as he saw them. They didn't fight. God was their sanctuary. The sea saw them in flesh. It makes a believer more than a conqueror. You are not fighting yet, you are winning. Erebi, Alengra, Akanto, Emineto, Sincere Rotabo. You better reposition. The things coming beyond food. You can beg food from a neighbor, it will give you. You can't beg rescue from pestilence. You know how many doctors passed on? The only COVID 19. Medical expertise equals zero in the face of pestilence. Zero. Zero plus plus. Nothing. They make it here. Anglo crate, no here. It, that is one hidden secret. That's why the devil went about, according to biblical prophecy, the love of many shall wax cold. So you can make a plea of them. As your love drops, his presence goes farther and farther and farther until he's gone. <laughs> you better keep your love for God alive. It's your ultimate security. In these hard times, in these times of uncertainties, is your ultimate security. I make it in there go. Break it to zero. We tortured COVID-19. You know it. We, we humiliated COVID-19. It went shamefully off the earth. I mean, but divine presence. If we dissolve any mountains, we dry up any sea. In the Ukraine, Manoko Tengalaro. Minitisi Amorundiaka. Wake up! Come alive! I once stated, you may have read maybe some of the books I've written. Don't ever claim to know my secret if you discover my heartbeat for God. The secret of my secret is my heartbeat for God. I love God so much. I love him more than I love me. I love this Jesus more than I love me. He's the only one that counts in my life. I don't count to me. My rose can So I smile. When that comes knocking, pfft. <laughs> smile. Amen. Amen. When you wear divine presence as a garment, you walk barefooted to the most bitter war front. Unscratched. Even thorn will not pierce your leg. You better check it. This love for things, love for fame, love for position, love for reputation. As wrong many people dry. Dry! I don't love many you. I love God. <laughs> I love God. I love God, sir. It's an, it's an assignment. No believer has more. Every believer has an assignment. You know, giving is an assignment. You that give it with cheerfulness. <laughs> so, so that, that, the love of God is on his own. It gets to a point where it's just indestructible. A man was lost in the sea overnight and came out 
and went on his next assignment. Next assignment. Have you ever seen that before? He's not a diver. They stoned him and left him for dead. And they gathered helplessly. How do we bury this man for God's sake? Nobody could pray over him. This is Paul. Paul, oh, Paul. Proper Paul. <laughs> Paul himself. God in the like of men. I mean, they couldn't pray over him. Why do I know what we do? <laughs> what just Jacob say? What's happening? Let's go to the next meeting. What's the next meeting? They went off there. He said, I don't know what to choose. Whether to go or to stay. Death had no meaning to Paul. He was wearing God. Paul was wearing God. He wasn't practicing presence. He was wearing God, not practicing presence. He practicing presence. And what's the chaos that for you and me is a genuine growing love for God. A genuine growing love for God. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. <laughs> Amazing word from the Lord. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Rootedness and groundedness in love. That is, you have already found, it has become a foundation of your life. May know, may be able to comprehend, what, which is this, with all the saints, what is the breadth and the length and the depth and height, and to know the love of God that passes all knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Can pestilence molest God? Can war threaten God? Can famine capture God? That is, there's a place for all saints, if you look at that. All saints, not for pastors, not for apostles and prophets, for all saints. To know the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth of the Lord of God, that they might be filled with all the fullness. My God, you, you'll be saying gods in the likeness of men in their numbers this end time. Attack will strike in the city and they'll find themselves in their home. From another nation, another nation. War strikes right there and is back in his home in Nigeria. Amen. 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 That's how powerful the love of God is. The, our love for God is. It enables you and I to wear God as a garment. The same way Jesus did. He will appear and demons will say, hey, have you come to Israel before the time? They couldn't stand him. You won't find him wasting his time. They come out, go out. Where are you from? He comes out, they go out. Something is breaking forth in one's life. Amen. That's why I like you to make this part of your takeaway from here. Lord, help me to wear your presence as a new garment. Not only why in church, every day of my life. Your struggles will fly off as if they are not real. He takes over the things concerning you and when he takes over, you can go to sleep. It's done. Again, my prayer is that everyone here will plug into this power line. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. When the love of God is at work in a man, great things keep happening on their own accord. Romans 8.28 Eyes have not seen I mean, sorry, Romans 8.28 It says, and we know that all things, how many of them? Work together for them for good. To them that love God. All things. They keep working on their own together for your good and my good. You are not crying for it. They just line up in your favor 
they line up in my favor. It's God's order from now. No area of anyone's life here shall run dry again. Yeah. With the love of God at work in a man's life, all things going to happen, great things begin to happen on their own accord for that individual. Unfortunately, why all of us have this supernatural virtue of love within us, because it's one of the vital fruit of the Spirit, most of us have not cared to learn how to steer or engage this treasure. We have it, but we haven't learned how to put it to work. Now, what is love? I have five descriptions here that may help us. Love for God in our context implies a God-first lifestyle. God first. Which is the greatest commandment of the Lord? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. We read that during the second teaching. With all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. It's going to come to it, an offering, an offshoot of it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. First, love God first. God first lifestyle. That is, everything about your life has God as first. Number two, in our context, love can be defined as placing God above all else, including oneself. God above all else including yourself. God above me. God above all that pertains to me. God above all that I have. God above all that I am. Luke 14, verse 26 and 27. If any man come to me, and hate not his father, mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters. Yea, and his own life also, it cannot be my disciple. And that on a daily basis, God before your face all of the time, in truth and in deed, that impact on all other areas of your life without any undue concern. It takes care of them. His love in you overflows to all the things that concern you. Number three, it's a kingdom advancement priority lifestyle. Seek ye first the interest of the kingdom of God in all righteousness and all these that others are dying to get shall be added to you on their own accord. On their own accord. Kingdom advancement addiction gets every good thing to keep adding to your life without crying for them. Kingdom advancement, priority lifestyle. Matthew 33. Kingdom advancement, priority lifestyle. We are trying to define biblical descriptions of genuine love for God. Number four, Loving what God loves. Do you love me? Go after my sheep. God so loved the world, he gave his only son to redeem us. So if we so love God, what are we giving up to see others redeemed? John 21, 15 to 17, 
Do you love me, Simon, son of Jonas? I love you, Lord. Okay, go and prove it. Love is not theoretical. Love for God is practical. How do I let the love of God in you? You see your brother in need, and you pray over him, be warm. Okay, that's okay. He said, how do I let the love of God in you? God's love has proofs, tangible proofs. Do you love him? It must stir passion for the lost in your soul, if you do. It's not about just going about the street, no. It's about taking your position in this mammoth harvest season, in whatever form. And finally, love for God is also described as denying oneself for Christ's sake. Denying oneself for Christ's sake. Luke 9, 23. Denying oneself for Christ's sake. So he come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Denier, self-denier. Deprive yourself of certain things for his sake. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 23, and this I do for the gospel's sake. There's a self-denier element of this. I will have done this, but for this purpose I can't. For this reason I cannot. Nothing of value is free. Only genuine disciples become apostles. There are so many things going on in the world today. Only genuine disciples, committed, faithful disciples that become apostles. We have to deny ourselves certain things to be a disciple indeed. And as he proves us, the apostle in us emerges. The pace setting grace comes alive. It's not something you organize or cook up. It's something you grow into. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's story is changing. Now, what is in love that makes it the greatest spiritual virtue? We started with that. When a believer is truly in love, is in God and God is in him which makes him a living wonder. If God be for us, who can be against us? Two, all true lovers of God carry divine presence, which makes a believer more than a conqueror. Battles can't wait for you. With faith, you have to fight. You put up a fight of faith before you can have victory. With divine presence, you walk from victory to victory without throwing a feast. His presence clears the barriers on your path. You emerge more than a conqueror. Winning without sweating. That's your new realm. That's your new realm. That's your new realm. That's your new realm. Also, it's interesting to know that staying in love with God makes a failure-proof believer. Failure-proof. Because love never fails. First Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. No matter the hardship on this earth, you never know failure. Yeah. You never know failure. Yeah. You never know failure. Yeah. They don't have to have jobs. You can create jobs. It gives you an insight that employs them. I mean, God is an awesome God, sir. It's an awesome God. God is an awesome God. They think your case is closed, but you are ordained to be their rescue. <laughs> you are ordained as their rescue agent. They closed the case of Joseph, but God, he opened it. And I hear your amen. Yeah. God is above every situation and circumstance on the earth. So never mind the going on. Just take your appropriate position in God. And things will keep answering to you according to his word. Can I hear your amen? amen. God's love never lacks proofs. Every true lover commands 
open proofs, open proofs, like we saw in the case of Paul, open proofs. That's who God is talking about. Charity never fails. Now, big thing. The love of God enhances our access to revelation. John 15, 15, I call you no more servants, but friends. And the servant doesn't know what his master does, but I've called you friends because all that I've had of my father, I have made known unto you. John 15, 15. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. Eyes have not seen what God has in store for them that love him, but God has revealed to them that love him by his spirit. For the spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. The larger a believer's heart for God, the greater his access to revelation. The greater his access to revelation. The larger one's heart is for God, the greater one's access to revelation. And revelation connotes spiritual illumination, which will shatter every gang up of darkness anywhere in the world. Spiritual illumination, you arrive and darkness knows that somebody has arrived because of the presence you carry. Can I hear your amen? It gives access, unlimited access to light. You won't run dry of revelation anymore. Yeah. Now, listen to me. The real farming, sir, is not the farming of food and water. It's the farming of the world. The farming of the world. The farming of the world. Amos chapter 8. They shall run to and fro, and they shall not find because there shall be a farming of the world. A farming of the world. That's where the true farming begins. Everybody loses control when the world is out of place. When the world cannot be assessed. So the love of God gives us access to the world that clears the harassment of farming of our life. Can I hear your amen? amen. <laughs> Elijah never lacked because he never lacked access to the world. He sent him to a pool called Sheriff and fed him there. Sent him from there to the house of the widow of Zarepa to help her out. He never knew lack because he never lacked access to the world. The farming of the world is a real farming. For man shall not live by bread in the room, but every word that comes unto the mouth of God. So man's life is cut short when the world is no longer accessible. Man's life is cut short when it was no longer accessible. But the love of God gives us access to revelation. You never run revelation dry anymore. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Absence of access to revelation is the bleeding ground for frustration. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are going to captivity because they have no knowledge. So it takes revelation to break forth in these hard times. Amen. Number six, it empowers our faith to deliver maximally because faith works by love or faith delivers according to the level of the love of God at work in us. Galatians 5, 6, faith which worketh by love. Do I have faith so I can remove my, but I have no charity, it profits me nothing. It is faith that gives value, it's love that gives value to faith. 1 Corinthians 13, 2. Next, it enhances access to wisdom from above. David, a man with a heart for God. We saw him behaving himself wisely. First Samuel chapter 18, and behaving himself more wisely. And behaving himself very wisely. And David went out where he was standing, and then uh, he behaved himself wisely. Wisely, you look at all those scriptures in that chapter. Wisely, the love of God opens us to the wisdom of God because He now we dwell in Him and He in us, and Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. So the wisdom oozes forth from us when we succeed to carry His presence and sustain His presence. Can I mention that again? It's not enough to carry His presence, but to sustain His presence. When the presence goes, everything goes on. When his presence left Samson, he was reduced to a piece of paper. There was nothing in him anymore. He became helplessly helpless. 
is not enough to be saved. It's important to stay in the faith. It's not enough to be in love. It's important to stay in love. Staying in love is retaining God's presence. It means all the difference all the time. The good news is many have escaped this morning. What more? Love is a choice. Do you love me? He said, don't let me think about it. Do you love me? He said, I love you, Jesus. It's a choice people make. Choose see this day whom ye shall serve. Choose see this day whom ye shall love. It's a choice. You make your choice to get married to so so person by reason of your love for each other. Can I hear you, Amen? So it's a choice we make. God won't make that choice for me, he won't make it for me. It's a choice we make. May you make that choice today and enjoy its blessings for life. May you make that choice today and enjoy its blessings for life. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Light has come, darkness has fled. Light has come, darkness has fled. Light has come, darkness has fled. Light has come and darkness has fled. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Some physical proofs of law are stated in scriptures as follows. If you love him, you will love his word. You won't be looking for your Bible every Sunday. Oh, how love I thy law. It's my meditation all the day long. That is David, a man with a heart for God. He loves the word of God. He loves the word of God. I rejoice at thy word as one that has found a great spoil. You love God, you will love his word. Two, you love God, you will love his house. I was glad when he said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. You will love his house. How am I by the tabernacle of God? Rather be a doorkeeper in your house than doing the tents of wickedness. You won't love God and not love his house. Number three, if you love him, you will have delight in keeping his commandment. Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. John 14, 21. And he that loves me will be love of my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Number four, if you love him, you will serve him cheerfully. Cheerfully. If you love him, you will give willingly to the cause of his kingdom. David said in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 3, And now, because I've set my affection to the house of my God, I've given of all, out of all my private treasure. You love him, you give willingly, excitedly. If you love him, you give to the needy around you. The commandment we have heard of him, if you love God, we love our neighbors also. First John Chapter 4 and verse 21. It's your turn. We are going to pray one prayer and then we close. What is the prayer? There is what we call the spirit of love. It empowers our love above prevailing circumstances. Peter truly loved Jesus. But he couldn't ride the storms. He denied Jesus three times. He couldn't ride his tongues. But after the Holy Ghost came, Peter became unstoppable. Sir. Peter became unstoppable. We are going to pray for the endowment of the spirit of love. It will empower love to ride the storms of life. As people's love begins to wax cold, then we keep waxing stronger and stronger. Peter said, if it means to die, I will not deny you. He really meant it, sir. But when he was face to face with that severe situation, he cowed. Romans 5, 5. Hope make it of a shame. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. He, shed, he fires the love of God into us, the Holy Ghost. We are going to pray, Holy Ghost, fire the love of God into next levels in my heart. Fire the love of God into next levels in my heart.
fire the love of God into the next level in my life. And deal me with the spirit of love. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There's a spirit of love. Amen. The Holy Ghost fires the love of God into our soul. We are going to pray that prayer so we can ride the storms of life without shaking. Without shaking. Without vibrations. You can ride the storms of life without vibration, without shaking. Praise God. So I, I don't know what anybody can put in front of me and say, deny Jesus. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he will do. Machine gun. Machine uh, flyer. What are you going to do? Deny Jesus? No. No. It is the Holy Ghost. Sir. When they saw their boldness, they took knowledge that they are being with Christ. They took knowledge that they are being with Christ. The Holy Ghost emboldens you to ride the storms of life without going down on your love for God. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? You ride the storms of life without going down on your love for God. Without going down on your love for God. Amen. Without going down on your love for God. So there is the fire of love. What you are doing right now is to pray, Lord, and fire my love by your spirit. Stand to your feet, everybody. And fire my love for you by your spirit. Pray that prayer as we close in this service. And fire my love for you into another level. And fire my love for you into another level. Pray that prayer. You are unbeatable in the battles of life with the love of God at work in you. Empower my love into next levels. And fire my love into next level so I can stay in love for you in season and out of season without shaking Holy Spirit is the only one who can help us Peter was depending on his capacity until the Holy Ghost came he couldn't stand Holy Ghost come Romans 5.5 5, take it to the Lord in prayer the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost has given to us. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Pray. Jesus said to Peter, I've prayed for you that thy faith faileth not. Amen. And vision delivers by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And faith can fail, that means vision can fail. But charity never fail, not shall not, never. You know the word? Charity never faileth. Never faileth. Never. I say love can fail. Jesus says so. That I faith faileth not. When I come, shall I find faith on the earth? Love can, I mean, love, I mean, faith can fail. Vision can fail because it, it thrives on faith. But love never fails. Welcome to this failure-proof realm of life. Yeah. Welcome to this failure-proof realm of life. Yeah. It will interest you, sir. Not one day we pray, oh Lord, build faith tabernacle. Not one day. Not one day. One day. Not one day that I confess, you shall build faith tabernacle. In fact, the one the design table, when I remember, oh, there's a record. The one in the design table is not being pursued. Pursue after God, sir. Every good thing we pursue after you. I've seen major, major prophetic lifelines delivered without any prayer point, sir. Without any prayer point. We are here today, oh, this church has never raised one prayer on the ark. Have you? Not one prayer point on the ark. Our prayer points are the same all over the world. Pursue things instead of pursuing after God. A.W. Taught, taught me in 1977, back there, from his book. He said, The harder you pursue after me, the higher you fly. Let's exchange our pursuit for things for pursuit for God. Pursuit after God is key to seeing his word come to pass in our life. They come to pass on their own, on their own, sir. 
on their own, on their own, on their own. That will be your experience from now. That will be your experience from now. If God is the one to confirm it, and you are in him, and he's in you, you are not looking for him. You are not going to remind him. You are actively in partnership. He's there every day. Not that he's, he went somewhere and then you have to remind him, sir, don't forget him. He's there with you day and night. And he's, turning, he's opening those new chapters to you one after another. You don't need this struggle. This thing works. This thing works. This thing works. And in the name of Jesus, <laughs> you're already holding the key in your hand to flourishing in hard time. With all the things we have had thus far as revealed by God, not one cancels another. It's a build up. What do I call it? It's a build up. It's a build up. If you love him, sir, you will serve. You will serve him. If you love him, you will give. If you love him, you will operate in the supernatural. You, faith will launch you to the realm of supernatural. It will change your mentality. It will change your mentality. I've never asked God once, how do you want to do this? No. You will be this tabernacle in one year, carry on Jesus. You can't do anything. <laughs> Okay, Governor University will resume here seven months only. He did it. He did it. So with love, you see so brightly that when God speaks, you don't have any problem. It's a build-up. Not one message has come to another one here now. And not one will. All that Bible put together, put together within one, that's a thousand and five hundred years. The package. No contradiction. Isn't that God also? Awesome God. Awesome God. But to wear his presence, my beloved son, is the greatest asset of his being. To wear his presence. When plane is doing like this, you are at rest. You are taking tea on the head of the devil. Because his presence can crash. That's right. Can his presence crash? Never. His presence cannot crash. When you're on the road, can he suffer a, ship, I mean, a road crash? No. You, you are relaxed. It relaxes you. Amen. Though I pass through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. His presence allays all fears. It allays all fears. So every category of human beings live in fear of one thing or another. <laughs> all those great business people, uh, around the world, you know, that don't know Jesus. They live in fear every day. A lizard moves across. They live in fear every day, every day of their life. And here you are relaxed. Relax in this presence. You'll be relaxed for life. <laughs> Lift up your two hands, everybody, and celebrate Jesus. Give him thanks for the day. It has been an hour of visitation indeed. Celebrate him. Magnify him. Give him glory and